Whoa, wait, 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 wait. Hello, card gamers. Ross Mero here, and today we are going to be opening a box of the second set in Gate Ruler, Advent of Evil God. I actually received this box in the mail a while ago, but I was too busy with work and other videos to open it right off the bat. And I mean, I can't open Gate Ruler products on the day of release because we don't get stock of them in Singapore. So I thought, you know what, I guess it's fine to open it a little late. But anyway, we're starting off with one of the three robots known as the Divine Treasures, Yasaka. We're gonna put this aside for now and you guys will see what that means. Nice! Our second card is Noiser, a brand new X. Vader with the DWM race which means Dimensional War Machine. So yes, this 5th nation represents the enemies of, well, basically the main characters here in Gate Rulers, the 4 main worlds, and as the name suggests, uh, Advents of Evil God, they are really bringing a greater presence in this uh, second booster, especially with their boss appearing. Okay, and that's it for our first pack, we are ending off with just a 2 star card. So, although the rarity ratios for Gate Ruler have already been very good from the first booster, like honestly it's super easy to get rare cards, they have decided to ramp it up one level higher and the SP rarity uber rare is now guaranteed one per box. So, I am definitely looking forward to seeing what our uber rare will be. But, <laughs> this is just an awesome new card for Volnar, which his name is basically some guy who looks like Anubis. So he's just some inhabitant of Volnar who happens to look like the Egyptian god Anubis. So it's just the lore here is just damn funky and weird. I love it so much. The new everyday crime. Oh, and first foil, we are getting a three star. It's going to be Alketa, a user of Genesis Summoning for Volnar. She is pretty powerful. Uh, the Card Kingdom. A Japanese card channel has uploaded quite a lot of videos covering her abilities and her synergy with the familiar Genesis summoning deck. It is really cool stuff. Okay, here we have the second piece of the Divine Treasures, Kusanagi. I'll put you at the back over here with Yasaka, we'll see what happens with that. Nice, and here we have the Dimensional War, uh, Invasion Dimensional Wall, I think, and this is a very important card you'll need to run if you plan to play X Vaders. It's kind of like, it's a set card, so you basically place it on the field, like kind of like a field spell, and then at the start of your turn, it absorbs the top card of your deck into its soul. And if you still have the soul by the end of the turn, you're gonna have to take damage, but you can expand the soul using the effects of the other X Vader cards, especially to unleash their own effects. And here we have A7 Mad Hatter, another really cool archetype appearing in this second set, which supports uh, Alice from Wonderland. So we're gonna put the A7s to the side as well. Nice! And here we have a new Wild Force member, uh, Daring Rhino. Cool, man. I just love the Wild Force. We're gonna create a set for them as well. And our next foil is gonna be a 4 star. And I honestly cannot read this. This is just a. Uh, Nue. Oh, I think this is some uh, mythological creature from uh, Japan, one of the yokais, and I, while I'm not really planning to make a deck around this guy, this is just like, this artist has drawn quite a few gate ruler cards already from the first set until now, and I love the way they portray their monsters, like I want to collect all of his art artwork cards, like this one. This is just so cool. Four star. Okay. Not too bad, 1, 3, 1, 4 so far. Next we have Daijinki Project. Uh, some of you guys already know what this is, we'll put it with the Divine Treasures on the top left. Another new Wild Force, Iron Bull, cool! Uh, let's put him down over there. What is this? Akudaman Cross Bla- Oh, right! So, uh, some of you guys might remember Bidaman from back in the day, this is a pun on that. Nice! A Berserker female ruler card, followed by a zero cost a beast. Two. So the rulers, we want to put them somewhere as well. Uh, I'll make more space in the middle once we finish this third stack, but let's just put them aside for now. Okay, it's the event cards. Dark Lord Levan, a pretty strong owl card support for Atlas. When he appears from the grave, he gets some pretty nice effects. And here we have Strider, a 4 star card and Demon Lord from Volnar with the Enhanced ability, basically allowing him to absorb your beasts into his soul and he also has an incredibly powerful skill known as Mind Distorment, which basically allows you to nullify your opponent's counters. 
which are essentially, well, I guess you could call them uh, heal triggers, in a sense, if you're unfamiliar with Gate Ruler, so he's a very strong card. Cool looking knight. Fairy. What is this? Geldes Geram. Okay, this clearly looks like it's for supporting uh, Abyssal Summoning, and so the name of the card is basically like a, this kind of like a ritualistic language that is used in quite a few of the Volnar cards, but the translation in actual text is put on the right, which is, according to the laws of darkness, those without power should perish. <laughs> yes, the, it's just... There's just so much love put into Gate Ruler, you know? You can tell some, the person who made this game and all the designers, they're just people who love card games and all this cool, like, over-the-top stuff so much, and I just really appreciate that so much. Next, we have Kimerara, a 3-star card for Volnar. We are getting a lot of Volnar cards. So she basically supports a battle techniques, which are event cards, which are, well, basically battle technique spells. Okay, here we have another A7 Humpty Dumpty. Putting you down over there. Space skeleton. <laughs> Funky. Ooh, a rat. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. I love cats, so this just really caught me off guard. I think this is another Kate C. Yeah, a ragdoll. So cute. Oh, and that's the, the mind control guy from the first set. The charisma wave. And here we have a new member of every day. Ooh, wait. This is a foil. It, it's so hard to see. It's so hard to see that this guy is a 4, but he's a member of the Kimokawa squad from Everyday Crime. Oh uh, wait, Everyday Crime is the English name. What's their... I can't remember how they've been localized into English, but yes, uh, Everyday Crime. And here we have Blue Titan, another one of the X-Vaders. I... Oh, cr wait a minute! Was that just our Uber Rare? Okay, I didn't see it enough to tell what it was, but let's go ahead and see what our- Okay, first, what Uber Rare do I want? I want either Cthulhu or Hastor, the bosses of the x alright? Now let's see... What we- Wait... Yes, this is our Uber Rare, I believe, but it is the leader of the Kimokawa squad Jenny Bunny! Alright, okay, so this is not the secret version because the unfortunate thing is that for Jenny Bunny, she has an even, she's another even higher rarity version known as a secret, so it's a bit of a shame that she appeared as our Uber because, well, there's one tier high. Dang, but not too bad, not too bad. She's a really strong card for. Alright, the Crime Knots, the Crime Knots. That's how everyday crime is being localized. We're not even one third through and we've got so many foils already. Here we have uh, the Space Elf Chloe, just a two star. Who is Ah from the Horror Squad, right? Yeah, the Horror Squad from the Crime Lords are pretty cool looking as well. What is this? Gwendy, a dragon from Volnar looking super badass. Oh, nice! And our third star is this another yokai creature from. Uh, your margin fund that I'm gonna very f find very hard to read. Uh, the Dragon Ghost Omagatsuhi. Oh, its ability, Magatsu Arashi, is very anti night. It allows you to bomb one of the opponent's set cards or rest one of their energy. So we'll put you down here for now. Let's carry on. Sorry, I literally have not enough space for all. Oh wait, is this a is this a new uh Mecha, like, uh, not predecessor, but like a new version of Victor from the previous set. Ulcanius, nice, man. Oh, just the designs, man, of all the gate ruler cards and the artwork, just so cool. Space Tutankhamen, nice. Okay, ooh, this is a pretty cool looking uh, alchemist space guy dude. Uh, no, I don't mean space uh, sorcery guy dude with abyssal summoning. Oh, Victor is here, sorry, wait. This is Victor. The other one in the first set, what was his name again? I, can't, I thought it was also Victor. Yes! And here it is! Our third star is going to be the other world god, Hastor. Dude! Like, just look at how freaking badass this guy is, man. 
I swear I need all of the Exvader foils. You get a special slot up here, you are staying there. Like, okay, those of you guys who are unfamiliar with Gate Ruler lore, uh, we know from the first set that this evil dimension, the Exvaders, are invading everybody, right? In the second set, we realize that those creatures from the Exvaders are actually from Lovecraftian literature. So we have Cthulhu, we have Hastor, all those creatures, and I am personally a very big fan of Lovecraftian literature, so this was just the most hyped thing for me. A female wizard, followed by uh, Edwards of Evil God, another support card for Exvaders, and I mean, even the dark grey uh, uh, outline for the Exvader cards just looks so cool, man. Yes, yeah, so I need them. I need all of the Exvader cards, man. Ragdoll. What is that? And here we have Dark Mother, pretty strong support for Abyssal Summoning, 3 star 2. How many 3 stars have we gotten so far? Next pack. Uh, which makes it a bit of a shame because if you guys didn't know, Gate Ruler cards, like the Japanese ones at least, are being manufactured here in Singapore where I live, but no one in Singapore is selling them, so these cards are being sent over to the US and Japan, and then I have to import them back in order to buy them and pay for the shipping as well. Isn't that just kind of ridiculous? Yeah, if only there was a way for me to get them. <gasps> nice! And here we have the... Oh my god, this, this, the name of this guy is the best. Here we have an Abyssal Symphonia Dragon 4 star. Final and dragon... Final and last dragon, the finale. Yes. <laughs> a Japanese fan uh, suggested this name to the creators and it was just the greatest thing ever. Well, I mean, since... English is not their native language, it probably sounds super cool there, so that's why I got adopted, but I mean, it's just the best thing ever. Uh, this is a pretty strong support card for Abyssal Summoning, uh, Abyssal Summoning, if I'm not wrong. Hmm, we are not getting the last piece of the Divine Treasures. What is this? Oh, our three-star card. Ah, the O from our younger days. Uh, this is Johan and Jake. Johan and Jake. Johan became an Abyssal Summoner, and Jake is... What is Jake doing now? What, is, what was Jake doing? I think I think Jake's just helping out of Atlas, kind of, but he's like on the good side of things. Okay, uh, Power Ray Maximum, a 4 cost Volnar spell. And since our energy is limited to 3, it's actually not possible to cast this card normally. But if you play as a wizard, wizard actually allows you to have up to uh, 4 energy during the opponent's turn, and that's when you can use this card. We already have Kusanagi, we're looking for the third piece. Ah, yes, another artwork from the guy who drew Nguyen. Yes, I love it so much. And this one is called K10. Dude, like, I would honestly make a deck out of these guys, man. It's so easy to get foils. Like, I would just buy more boxes if they were more easily accessible for me. Oh, wait a minute, this guy is being reprinted in set 2. I thought he was one of the free cards. Demolition Salamander. Oh, he's a Wild Force member. This is a pretty different art style, but I can appreciate that. And here we go, Mikagami, the third divine treasure. So we've got all three assembled on the left over here. A space monster flat wars. Pretty cute. Okay, we've got the three pieces of the divine treasure now. Now we just need to get their complete form. Oh, who is this? Black Knight Gastel. Pretty cool. Uh, Shimokawa, uh, the Korosuki Unicorn, the unicorn that wants to kill you. <laughs> oh, Yamanato Orochi. Now this is a, uh, well, a creature from Japanese mythology that I think most people will be quite familiar with. Quite a prominent figure that's used as inspiration in a lot of games and I think anime as well. And here we have uh, the Unknown Power Jake. Yes, Jake has returned in a stronger form. Next pack. Ooh, what is this? Oh, from the GNG Warehouse. G oh, made by GNG Magic Drone Hellkaido? Hellkaid, I guess. Pretty cool looking car. Another nice uh, Japanese robot. The Lying Moon, a 3-star x Vader car. Oh, this is a Genesis Summoner who can make use of beasts. Yep, whereas the usual ones, I think they use a Warriors if I'm not wrong. Ah, this is a pretty cool looking robot. Alright, Tenrai with both Caution and Counter-Attack. Man, 
I just love the fact that for these like main big series of monsters, they always get the same artist to come back to like draw the new members or like the new versions of those cards, like new new members of these like so-called archetypes if you want to call it that, and just it adds so much more consistency to this gate ruler world. Like, for example, right, the reason why Yu-Gi-Oh is my favorite card game is because I feel like the art style is mostly consistent, so it really feels like everything is in the same world. And that's why I've never really gotten into other card games like Battle Spirits and Vanguard that much in comparison. Yu-Gi-Oh has always been the top for that consistency for me. But Gate Ruler, right, even though the art style is so different with every card, somehow, right, there's this feeling that the soul is the same, especially since you have this knowledge that, I mean, there are five worlds, right, so it's fine for each of them to have a bit different distinct flavors in terms of art style as well. And that just has that almost the same level of consistency as Yu-Gi-Oh to me, which I really like. Go! Wild Force, go! Very nice support card for Wild Force. Yes! Woo! And here it comes, like... I mean, you are guaranteed to pull so many 3-star and 4-star foils in a box of Gate Ruler, like... I don't even have to worry about buying singles, I might as well buy a box and just get all of these cool ass cards I'm looking for, man. The other world god, Cthulhu. Yes! If only you were my Uber, but I will take you, I will take you. I've literally just got everything I wanted to get from this set. Kas Hastor and Cthulhu. We're not even literally done with the second stack, there's still one more stack of rare cards to go through. Man, this is just insane. Okay, here we have Lion King Ruva, goes very well with that Genesis Summoner earlier, who can basically produce beasts with smaller beasts. Okay, now moving into our third and final stack, here we have Dai Jinzan, Dai Jinki's special move. Uh, those of you guys who are not following Game Ruler probably have no idea what Dai J Dai Jingi is just yet. Hopefully, we'll be able to pull him as well, but I think he's 4 stars, so it might be pretty difficult. Elite Kaijin Black Man. Pretty cool looking, and this is a 3 star. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see the foiling on Wonderverse cards a bit, because it kind of blends very nicely into their uh, layout. Another uh, dimensional wall, invading dimensional wall. We're getting a lot of your margin front cards with the new sets. Uh, I don't think it's sets. I don't know how it's being localized, but it's basically like the standby mechanic where although it's a uh, unit, you can treat it as a spell and set it like face down in your spell zone and then later summon it from there. Oh, our legend card has just arrived. And it is Dragonic Armageddon, okay? I don't know what this card does, but since it's a legend, I'm gonna take a moment to read it. On counter, choose one of your opponent's level 2 or lower cards and delete it. And normally, the usage timing is normal. Choose one of your opponent's cards and delete it. And choose up to one of your opponent's other cards. And if you have a level 2 or higher dragon on the field, you may destroy it as well. Pretty insane. Will go pretty well with, I think, uh, the... Dragon starter deck, which I have with me right now, but I'm gonna take some time to open that. Got other stuff I like to work on in the meantime. Still pretty busy with work. Okay, we're mostly seeing the same cards again. Here we have a female Legion ruler that we're gonna put to the side over there. Sorry, I don't think you can see them right now, but I'll show you guys all of the rulers and foils that I managed to pull at the end in a single shot. Yup, we can just blaze through the comments now. And what is this? Galaxy Swordmaster Grand Messer, and he has another Galactic Heritage and a Robo. Pretty cool. So I guess uh, basically from the same series as Grand Galak. A 4 star. Nice. So you go here. Let's not cover our Uber. Alright. Ah, and here we have a 3 star support for Abyssal summoning Balam Lem Lex. My soul is already one with the darkness. And this is an insane card that if you flip on counter, allows you to perform Abyssal summoning on the opponent's turn. And wait a minute, I just realized there are these swords over here on the Volnar cards. Wait a minute, but the units don't have them, right? Yeah, 
Oh wait, they're down there at the bottom. Oh my god, I only just realized that. That is such a cool design. Man, dude, gate ruler, man, gate ruler. You're going there. Still no sign of Daijingi. Another Chloe. How many packs left? Uh, just four. Whoa! Wait, 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 wait! Two Ubers? How is that a thing? Wait, this doesn't even make sense. These are the same rarity, right? You guys can see that, right? Did I just get an error box? How am I getting two Ubers? The number code on this Uber is slightly different from the other one I have, so it might actually refer to something else? But anyways, I guess I'll just look it up while I'm editing and we just got four future men's as our other Uber rare and it features basically the four main characters of the Wonderverse lore in like a really cool uh, movie style artwork. Okay, so the four stars, maybe we can shift them over a bit and we'll put the two Ubers down over here, both from Wonderverse, nice! Man, it just feels so good to just open a box of Gate Ruler because of the amount of foils you'll be getting. Like, I could do this for therapy, man, when I'm feeling down. Just open a box of Gate Ruler. Oh, and here we have an Atlas card for Owl, and it's a beast. Uh, the Demon of the Desert, Pazuzu. Ah, uh, this is a pretty famous uh, demon from Western lore, right? Four stars. And we're just down with two packs. Dude, how many freaking foils have we pulled? Okay, we're ending off with the Charisma Wave, level 99. And now down to our final pack. Okay, if I could get just one last foil here, the ones I want to get are either Daijinki or this Dragonic Robo on the front. I can't remember what his name is, but he's a really cool looking card as well. Alright, final pack. Two, three, and here we go. Is it a foil? No, it is not going- Oh, it is a foil! It's a three-star event, a secret weapon. Okay, there are so many foils that I literally cannot fit them into a single shot. So let's start with the lower rarities. First, for the rulers, I got one of each of the new rulers, but the female versions, and I got 11 triple stars. For the high rarities, I got a total of 10, 7, 3 stars, one legend and two Ubers. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, do give it a like, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe for more Gate Ruler Booster Box and product openings. With that, I will see you guys in the next Gate Ruler video. Shoo.